we'd like to get a little bit of Husker recruiting update every week from Brian Munson of Husker Online. So we've welcomed him back via the Aloe Fiber VIP line. Uh, just two weeks away from football. Brian, it's uh, it's coming in on us. Are you, are you ready for football to kick off? I am. I Actually, I, I think I put the cart a little bit ahead of the, the horse the other day. I think I was thinking that next week was – I had some I had some basically, you know, some wishful thinking. I thought it was next week. I lost track of my weeks in the month of August. So I'm, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed. I, I did that this morning. I was like, oh, yeah, next week I get to watch Nebraska. I'm going to go watch UNK play, and I get a five-day weekend for Labor Day, and they go – uh that's not next week dude uh, you, got another, you got another week before that can happen i was like oh my goodness i've got total warning this total, ad total vacation and football on the brain yeah well that, that's that's not that sounds about just like everybody here we're, we're looking forward to it thankfully now uh just two weeks away i wish it could be one week but you can still watch week zero that's that's probably you know that can maybe catch you up a little bit there uh well but, we got uh, and, and there's a big there's a big scrimmage tonight and i think that's the reason why i was thrown off i'm gonna go out and watch two of nebraska's commitments down here in the dallas area uh square off against one another so Kiwan Lacey from Lancaster is going to play against Mario Buford from DeSoto at Lancaster uh-huh. tonight. This is a, this is probably a huge, it's a huge, a huge game. I mean, it's like, it would, it would be a huge game for the Friday night, like regular game, but I mean, it's, there's some, there's some seriously talented dudes playing tonight. So this has absolutely nothing to do with uh, Nebraska football, but I, you, you said that and I reminded me that you, you're in Texas. Um, and I keep seeing this on Twitter, Melissa high school, 40 miles north of Dallas just opened a $35 million football complex with a 10,000 seat stadium and state of the art indoor practice facility. The school only has 1300 students. Is that just kind of standard for Texas high schools? <laughs> it's getting to be that way. Um, uh, you, you, Melissa. So for people like that don't understand the Metroplex, the Metroplex is booming. Um, I, I can't go on the road without seeing, you know, a, several transplant license plates, people that have moved to the Metroplex. There's a lot of new headquarters that have moved over here in the last couple, three years during COVID. Um, we used to get letters in our mailbox, like I will buy your house tomorrow. You know, like <laughs> it, it was, it was really, really, really wild. Um, Melissa is kind of on a fast track, you know, everything's kind of booming North, don't push in towards the red river. So if you're out of Denton going to Little Elm or if you're out of McKinney pushing towards Melissa, that's the way that things are going. There's going to be another, they're talking about another beltway, you know, kind of going north of what the existing ones are already at. So it's kind of layered out. This will be the third layer essentially of that beltway. So Melissa, Melissa and Melissa's had talent. They've had incredible D1 talent over the last couple of years. They got a defensive lineman this year. They were supposed to visit Nebraska in March that uh, decided suddenly that he was not going to go to Lincoln. He was going to go down to Austin and check stuff out. So, uh, you know, the funny thing is, too, it's like if you have an option about like where to go ahead and live in the northern side of of Dallas. So if you're going like as you push north, it goes like Richardson, Plano, McKinney, you know, then you kind of get in the Melissa area then you get kind of out of it. You go to Sherman and whatever. But if you're looking for a spot to live, you really have two of the largest, you know, kind of areas or, excuse me, stadiums um, for your child to play in if they play football. You have Allen Stadium, which I think originally was like an $80 million stadium that seats like thirty five or 45000 So we, we had the pleasure of, work, of playing there my son's junior year, and that's where we got knocked out in the second round. And then McKinney ISD Stadium is actually bigger than Allen's, and it's shared – among like three or four high schools now that, that McKinney has. And I think it seats like 50,000. Um, so as you kind of keep moving North, now all of a sudden Melissa comes in and they do the $30 million deal and you get a 10,000 foot stadium. And that's about, you know, a little less than as what we typically would get at our home stadium down here in Rockwall. But that's like what you can kind of expect, you know, that the first time I ever went to a, and I'll, I'll wrap this up quick, but the first time I ever went to a high school football game down here, it was Garland High versus Plano High, and it was a Friday night game, and ESPN was covering it. There was a 500-piece marching band. Uh, there were about 7,500 people there. They had the big inflatable helmets with all the smoke, and this was 1999, and I was mm-hmm. losing my mind. <laughs> I mean, just at the amount of people and the, and the spectacle and the production that goes along with it, it's every Friday night, wherever you have it, 
you're getting that type of production. So there's there's some amazing places like going out to, to Longview to go see a game. You can't beat the Lobos cry out there, going to Lancaster for a game. I mean, it's it's really amazing to kind of come down here and check out some high school games. I, I, I want to make I got to make it down there there for some high school uh, action at some point, because that does sound uh, really cool. Yeah, I really just looked fun. up the Allen High School Stadium and that looks better than some colleges. Yeah, and go look up go look up McKinney ISD shared stadium. I mean, it is it is spectacular. It is unbelievable. We had there there were so many people in the so when we played uh, Duncanville in the fall of 2019, that's Jackson Smith and Jigba's, you know, high school football mm. team. My, my son, the, the, my son played with we had people sitting in the aisles. I mean, there were, there were, there were close to 50,000 people there that day for, for the fourth or fifth round high school football playoff uh, uh, game in December. It was amazing. That that is amazing. Again, if if you if you have time, search it. We're we're kind of looking it up now. On, on... those things are huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the internet, and it's it's really cool to see. Uh, jumping into a, some recruiting here, Brian. I know one one name that that kind of caught our eye at, at some point for Husker recruiting made his decision. Uh, Williams Nwarney, uh cho- cho- choosing to go to Missouri was to, has Nebraska kind of been out of this thing for a while, or was or, or is this uh, something they've been fighting at with still? Yeah, you know, I, I think Nebraska was not going to go down without a fight. Uh, they were able to get Nwarney, uh back on campus last spring after Bill Bush, you know, rejoined the, the staff. That was a huge thing. I mean, getting Bill in the Kansas City area under Scott Frost was really critical in getting, you know, Williams and uh to get back over there and check stuff out. Now, Williams obviously was there again, I think, in March for the junior day it might have been before then i'm going off the top of my head he has visited one time but i mean he was there for one day quickly out went to went to ohio state the next day so it was very kind of easy to kind of put it in the baffles Mm. um and you know he he got elevated on on three he was always the number he was the number one defensive lineman at that point in march but then he he uh, moved to the top of the list overall um, as the number one overall player uh, in, in the nation uh, in this year's class, too, probably a month or two ago. So um, <clears throat> spectacular player in Nebraska, obviously, you know, wanted to be a little bit, wanted to take this one a little bit deeper. Uh, I think that he announced a top four, top five that did not include Nebraska. Um, and, and honestly, I, I didn't really think that they would even get him a, get him back on campus. I'll just mm-hmm. be honest with you. I mean, it felt like he had a connection with Bill Bush yeah, it felt like he, uh, he, you know, going through another change like that, I think it's very easy to kind of forget about a school because there's just like a lack of stability. Uh, but I, I think that, I think what, you know, Coach Dvorak, Coach Rule, and, and what they had been trying to do in the Kansas City area, I think it made them feel like they had to go back and take a look. And, you know, and they had the facilities, obviously, that were that were there. Um, but yeah, I, Nebraska, Nebraska put their best foot forward on him and several others like an Aiden Breland, you know, who's, who's coming down, look, looking like closely, like he's going to make a decision too. another top rated defensive lineman that it looks like Nebraska is going to miss out on, but it's just like Nebraska just doesn't have enough oomph like behind it. They don't have that kind of track record. They don't have it showing like how, you know, their, the trajectory of, of how they're playing on the football field yet. But it's really encouraging that Nebraska can can get those types of players, whether they're regional players or or national players, to visit already without having kind of that team that's eight and four, nine and three the year before, as opposed to a four and eight team with the change of the head coach position. Now, is there such a thing as maybe like trying to go after like too big a fish and spending too much time on guys that maybe are, are, are a long shot, or do you, do you kind of you think that if you, if you cast a wide net, you know, you might bring some of them in and um, but you still have time for maybe some more of the realistic signees that you have. Well, I, I think with, you know, a few of these guys, obviously, I mean, NIL comes into the equation. Um, I think that they, they, they want to, they want to go ahead and, and kind of check out everything about what they, uh, what is, what is on the table, what the possibilities are, what can be kind of expected. Um, obviously I think, you know, we announced, uh, announced my, uh, uh, three and out on, on Wednesday, there's a really, you know, kind of unique law that just got passed in the, uh, and just got signed by the, by the state governor of, of Missouri yesterday, where in-state players, um, as soon as they sign, that's basically the financial paperwork with an in-state institution, they are eligible to start, uh, to start receiving NIL benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's a really interesting kind of twist on how things, you know, Nebraska has been trying 
years, for years to get a little bit more uh, established in the state of, of Missouri. And it seemed like they get a guy and then they kind of go on a drought. and Maybe they get some interest for some re- more guys and not get anybody. This isn't going to help. Um, these are the types of situations here that, you know, obviously Nebraska has to be very competitive uh, in the, in that area. And I think that's, that's why you get those top guys are out there doing that research as opposed to just kind of funneling themselves to, you know, last year's national champion or the last year's runner up or here are the top four teams last year or whatever. I think that they're having to be, uh, you know, having to vet quite a few more programs to kind of figure out like where things are all at. I think, I think honestly, I think where a team is at in, in the, the likelihood of success always, you know, it, it seems to be winning out more more often than just like the NIL side. But the NIL side, you know, compensation at some of those schools too, where that you know the Georgias, the Tennessees, etc. Uh, those those are some of the some of the best NIL kind of uh, uh, programs that they have in place right now. So I mean, it's it, it seems like they're kind of going hand in hand. Uh, well, Missouri will be important for the future of Nebraska as well as Iowa. We all know, know about the 500-mile radius uh, and, and just recruiting the Midwest in general. Grant Bricks, still a big name that Nebraska is, is in on and, and we're looking forward to. There's only a few you know, a few more names out there, um, but uh, Grant Bricks, it was kind of been reported nearing a decision. Any more updates on him? So I talked to Grant last Sunday. Uh, he said that he was really getting close to making a decision. He felt like it was going to be before his first game. I believe his first game is on the 25th. Yeah. So we're about a week away where I think, you know, some news is going to start uh, coming up. Now, I, I think it could extend into the week after. He's he's really just, you know, I, I think he's – I think he's motivated to make a decision, but I think he's also discouraged that he has to make a couple of phone calls and tell some schools that he's not coming there. I, I just don't feel like he likes to let people down. Mm. Um, so I think that that's a big, that's a big part of it. But I, I do feel like, you know, we're, we're getting close. I feel like, I feel like uh, Nebraska is in a really good spot there. Uh, I think that as long as, 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 as the, the timeline grows longer, all the way closer up to, you know, the official announcement date, I think it really helps Nebraska out when you're the closest school that he's considering. Uh, I do feel like the major competition for him is really Oklahoma. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and rule Kansas state completely out because he did, he did tell me that night that all three programs were uh, sort of even to him and that he couldn't make a bad decision. And that's where I kind of feel like geography kind of always tends to be kind of the tiebreaker, you know, among schools. It's usually the one that's usually the one thing you kind of come back to and say, uh, I, I can go here and, you know, my parents and family and, and relatives don't have to go several hundred miles more to go see me play on a Saturday afternoon. Hmm. Uh, now, we do know that there's a, a big class already kind of for this this team. We already mentioned just a, a few more maybe targets out there to add to the class. What does that mean as we start to get into the season in official visits? Usually a big, big interest in, in, in seeing, uh, you know, who's coming to check out Nebraska. Um, is it just not going to be that big of an official visit type year for Nebraska? It's it's really not. I mean, you know, we don't we know about Brandon Baker, you know, coming in the, the week of uh, September fifteenth, which I think is the first home game against NIU. Uh, we have heard some about a couple of teammates from Salt Lake City coming in the last weekend in September, and I'm not sure uh, if those visits actually even happen, I think it's really going to matter like with where Nebraska is kind of at, you know, after bricks, um, do they, do they get a pass rusher here, you know, here in the coming weeks, because it's like, you've got uh, a Jay Sean Ross potentially, you know, who could be, who could be a guy that I think it's very high on Nebraska's border. They look for that pass rushing guy along with like a, a Davu Tuataga, you know, who's also from like Eagle mountain, Utah, um, uh, who visited in July, uh, so it's it, it, there's 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 really not a lot of like by this point right now, guys, I would probably know of a double digit total of official visitors right now. I think I only feel confident that I know one mm. um, and, and, and it's it's just it's going to be a very, very different thing. I mean, you're talking about 24 guys already in the 2024 class. I think Nebraska is probably looking to add, you know, between two and four more players to the, to the class. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, you've already taken uh, all those guys have taken official visits except for Willis McGahee, the four. So McGahee would be another guy that we would know about that would be coming in at some point this fall. 
other than that, I think you're going to see guys just traveling on their own dime, doing the unofficial trips. Um, and then you're going to see, I think Nebraska wants to turn the page very, very quickly and start looking at these 2025s and really trying to get, you know, uh, Alex Mansky, the, the, the quarterback out of Iowa, to try to get, you know, try to get him in the class shortly after his junior year and, and, you know, try to close Christian Jones, you know, the, the, the stud linebacker you know, out of West side. So I think that there's, I think that what they're seeing right now is that they can kind of close off their efforts here, move on to the next and try to really keep improving on what they're doing, you know, as a, as they're recruiting, you know, each and every next class. That's interesting. You mentioned that just kind of last question. Cause I, I, I thought that stone Sanders is kind of their primary quarterback tra- target. Do you think Mansky's kind of overtaking that? I do. Um, stone Saunders, uh, actually you said stone, right? Yep. Uh, Stone committed to Kentucky. Oh, okay. That's right. um, but things changed radically there. So I think what happened, I think what happened was um, there was a change, I think, at the offensive coordinator uh, coaching spot at Kentucky. And as soon as that happened, I think that there was a connection back from, I think, him back to Saunders' family or to Stone himself. Mm. So that changed. I mean, Stone visited in June. I believe, or maybe even in March and things really kind of went quiet. I think and actually he might've been in June too. And the Mansky camped and then Mansky got the offer after camp and Nebraska really kind of shifted all of their attention from that point over to, over to Mansky. So Mansky and Mansky taking his third trip to Nebraska at the end of July was, uh, was really a great sign for the Huskers. Now, Brandon Baker, and this will be the last one before we get you out. Um, Brian Munson, a Husker online. Brandon Baker, you said he's going to visit. What are the short answer? What are the odds that Nebraska will be in the top five for Brandon Baker? I think there's a decent chance. Um, I think he really likes the staff. I think he really likes Nebraska. I don't think that there's a school that he's considering that has a better path to him seeing early playing time. I think obviously Oregon is the team to beat. They have, they have a family tie there. His brother played there. But uh, I think there's a decent chance that Nebraska could end up making that next cut. Mm-hmm. Well, there you have it. Uh, thanks for again for the time, Brian. We've got about two weeks before the, the kickoff of Husker football. Of course, like we were mentioning to begin this interview, high school football on its way. Uh, so best of luck. Have some fun with football season back. You guys had to remind me that I was a week off again. Okay, I'm going to roll back into my sleep and wake me up in a week and a half. <laughs> All, right. All right, Brian. <laughs> there you go. Later. There he goes.